Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to look up routing info using the command line in a FortiGate. Now, this information is not just good for those studying for the NSE4 exam, but it's useful for anyone looking to build their FortiGate skill set. The command line can be awkward if you haven't used it yet. What's the best way to get over that awkward phase of the command line if you're not quite used to it? It's use it. There is no shortcut to getting better at the command line. It's just simple repetition. What better way to learn the command line than to learn it practically, and in this video, we're going to do just that. Before we jump into the video, though, I do want to say thank you. The support that I've been receiving from Twitter, from LinkedIn, from YouTube comments, and from subscribers, from everybody, it's been phenomenal. Thank you. I just started making these videos, but I've already received some feedback. I've heard from people that have said, hey, thank you. This is so much better than what I was already finding out there. And to be honest, I can't believe it because I don't feel like I'm in that position to provide that super high quality content, but apparently I am. All of that to say, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the bell. That will notify you every time I upload a new video, not just in the NSE4 series, but all my videos. All right, before I show you the main routing commands that I'll be using in this video, it's important that I explain some concepts about the FortiGate command line. For instance, you need to be aware that I'll be using get commands, show, and show full commands in this video. Each one of those has a subtle difference. So if we go here and I say, I wonder what, and you know, maybe I hadn't configured this before, so in my head I'm thinking, I wonder what the static routing configurations are. There's a few ways to get that information. The easiest and the, the most compact input, or sorry, the compact output command that you can use is the show router static command. And you can tab that out uh, and then do a question mark and it's gonna ask you for a sequence number. And sequence number is just the number that you assigned to the static route when you created it. It's completely arbitrary. In this instance, I chose one. It could be 100, it could be 50, it could be 99, it doesn't matter. In this instance, it's one. So I'm gonna hit one in there. And when I hit this, it's gonna show me only the items in the configuration for the static route that I have changed from the default setting. So as you can see here, it's not very much. I've done config router static, edit one, set gateway, set device, I hit next, and then I hit end. So that's all of it. Now, if we wanna see all of the available configuration settings for this, this static route, we would do show full. Show full says, show me all of the changes that I've made to this configuration item, but then also show me everything that's still at default. So when we do show full router static and then the number, it prints out a lot more information as you can see there. So that's a, a key difference. That's an important difference to remember. Uh, the main reason you would wanna use show full is if you know that there's a configuration setting in the command line that you wanna make, but you can't remember the specific command, uh, instead of using the question mark, you could plan ahead by doing a show full and say, okay, there it is, set priorities at zero, I need to make that 10. You could go in there, make the change, and then you're all set. So the other one is, uh, and you know, I'm skipping ahead a little bit here in the demo, but I wanna show you, uh, make sure that you're aware. When you're talking about get commands, um, they're different from show commands, because get commands, you're getting the output of a process. Whereas with show commands, you're, you're asking it to show you the configuration as it is in the memory. So for instance, with the show router and show full router, we're saying what configurations have been, have been made on this firewall. Uh, with the get command that I'm about to show you, it's saying what is the output of this process. So if we do get routing info, oh, get router, if we do get router info, routing table, all, and there's a few here, but I'll do all for the purposes of this demo. When we do this, it prints out the output of your routing table. It's not showing you a command anymore, it's printing out the actual routing table. And as you can see there, we have three routes. Now, I'll get into this more and help you understand it in just a minute. I just wanted to demonstrate the difference between show, show full, it's how you save those changes. Uh, instead of hitting end, you can actually use next. And I'll show you an example of that right now. So if we go in here and we say, we need to configure port three and port four, uh, we need to set different allowed access settings on it. We no longer just want HTTP, we also want SSH. So if I go in here to config system interface and then hit enter, and we want to edit port three, like I said, sorry, no space there, just port three, all one word. We're gonna set allowed access to SSH. Now, if I hit end, which I'll do for demonstration, it takes me all the way back to the global configuration prompt. Now at this point, I have to type config sys interface again and then edit port four to get back to this point. 
Now, if we go into edit port four, we set allowed access to SSH like we talked about. And let's say I now need to edit port five. Instead of hitting end, I can just hit it next. And it'll take me back to the interface, interface configuration prompt. So I could do, if I wanted to, edit port five, port six, whatever at this point, and I'm back in there a little bit quicker just to save you some time. All right, so now we're gonna get into the routing portion of the video. The first command I wanna show you in regards to getting routing information out of the command line is get router info routing table all. And I kind of gave you a preview of this just a minute ago, but let's go ahead and break this down. So what we're saying is get the router info. And what we wanna see is routing table. And now when you get to this last part here, you can use all and it'll show you every single route that this FortiGate has in it, or using the question mark, we can see all of the information available to us. We could say, show us only directly connected. We could say, we could say show us only the static or show us only the OSPF routes. For the purposes of this, let's do all. And as you can see here, it prints out your active routing table. And at first, at the top there, there's, there's the codes. That's like your dictionary that tells you, hey, uh, K is, is your kernel routes, O is OSPF, C is for directly connected, S is for static, and it goes on and lists it out. And then below that is the actual information in your routing table. And as you can see there, we have an S and a star, and that asterisk next to the S means this is your default route, and it's uh, for everything going out port one using 10.1.1.1 as its next hop. And then also you can see we have two directly connected routes. One is the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 on port one, and then the other is 10.2.2.0 slash 24 on port two. Now let's say we're troubleshooting an issue and we weren't certain what the static route was. We could just say, show us the static route that's available and in the routing table, and it would print out just the one. Same thing with OSPF. If you're shooting a OSPF adjacency problem, um, you could do the same thing there. Now, I don't have OSPF configured on this. It's just a little lab. So it'll tell you no route available. All right, so I know we're in the middle of the command line. Uh, I wanna take a minute though, and just make sure that this is the right depth of knowledge. I'm not going too shallow. I'm not going too deep. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this. So again, with the next command, uh, this is getting back into a little bit of what I showed you with the demonstration of show, show full, and get. But we're talking about the show router static now. You actually, I'll stop here and I, you can see, again, like the get router info routing table, and then you can specify a dynamic routing protocol or a static or a connected route. You can do the same with show router. Now, in this case, I'm going to do show router static, and it'll print out the configuration that you have entered into this FortiGate. I gave you a preview of this earlier, but let's go ahead and dive into it a little bit more. If we do show full, again, show full shows you the entire configuration, even those things that you haven't changed. Show full router static. It now shows you, since I only have one static route, it only shows you one static route, but it shows you all of the settings that are in there for that static route. Now moving on, uh, out of the show commands and into the get commands, we have one here, which is the get router info protocols. Now get router info protocols shows you sort of a snapshot in time of all of the active dynamic routing protocols on your FortiGate. So if we do get router info protocols, it prints out a bunch of information. It shows you what's going on with RIP. It shows you what's going on with OSPF and ISIS. Now I have none of these configured. So these are actually just the default output from every FortiGate that you enter this command into. But if this was configured, you would have a lot of useful information here. It's a fantastic way to get a mile high overview of your current dynamic routing processes. All right, now the last one I'm gonna show you here, um, I've been told by some very smart people that this used to be more useful, uh, but they have sensed, and they, Fortinet, has since fixed the bug or the uh, series of bugs that created this problem in the kernel. So we don't have to use it as much, but it still is useful to you. You won't need it for the NSC4 exam, but just lock this away, hold it in your memory in case you ever run across this situation. And that is one where you have configured static routing or OSPF or whatever it is. You've configured the routing, you've verified the, the, the routing configuration, and everything looks good, but you're still not able to pass traffic to the routes that you should be able to. A problem that FortiGates used to run into, and I'm talking about you know code in 5.2 and code 5.4, keep in mind we're on 6.4 right now, uh, a problem they used to run into was the kernel would get a route. So we're talking about the 40 OS kernel. The kernel would get a route and then it wouldn't purge that route after an update. So it would, it would freeze. It would lock onto that route and not release it. How would you know if this is going on? You could use get router info kernel to see what's going on there. 
as you can see, we print that out. We have get router info kernel and it tells you everything that's being used by the 40 OS uh, uh, operating systems kernel to route traffic. So if you did want to fix this, there's two ways that you can fix it. If you identify a route that's in the kernel that shouldn't be there, you can reboot the firewall, the FortiGate, and that will purge the kernel. Uh, it'll purge the routing table that the kernel is using. Or you can use diag ip route delete, which is looks like this diag ip route delete, and then you're going to need quite a bit of info to work through there because it's very specific. It doesn't want you just uh, arbitrarily deleting routes out of the kernel, so it asks for a bunch of information. You're going to need uh, the source port, the source interface, the destination address, the destination gateway, uh, the next hop, um, uh, route weight, route priority. It, it wants to be very, very specific before it takes any action, so keep that in mind. Thanks for watching the video. That's it, that's complete. We've covered the whole topic. I wanted to say thank you for watching the entire video. It really makes me happy to know that I can help people like you. If you wanna follow along, I've also got a Twitter account. You can follow me over there. It's at infosec for human Again, thanks for following along, and I look forward to helping you in the future.